Did you know that having dry eye is very common with lupus and many other autoimmune conditions? We can get so focused on joint pain, pain, brain fog, and fatigue that we completely ignore the very important and quite frankly pain in the butt symptom of dry eye. Whether you have lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, or Sjogren's syndrome, paying attention to your eye health will help you feel more comfortable today and could possibly protect your vision in the future. So stick around. There are two main ways dry eye happens. One, we lose too much water from our tears, thus drying them out. This can happen with certain medications, having slow blink rate, allergies, contact use, or even vitamin A deficiency. The second reason is we don't create or secrete enough tears. This is what happens in autoimmunity. Sjogren's syndrome is an autoimmune condition where the main symptom is dry eyes and dry mouth. In Sjogren's syndrome, the lacrimal glands or the glands that produce tears get inflamed and can't produce tears normally. This is a hallmark symptom in Sjogren's syndrome, but can happen in any other autoimmune condition. Whether it's due to having secondary Sjogren's, which just means someone also has Sjogren's syndrome, so they have two autoimmune conditions, or it's just part of their primary diagnosis, dry eye is very common. And if you want to learn more about Sjogren's syndrome, I did a whole video on that and we'll put the link in the description box. For many, having dry eye is pretty obvious. Your eyes can feel scratchy, irritated, or become red. A common sensation is feeling like you have sand in your eyes. However, having watery eyes can also be a symptom of dry eye. Dry eye can certainly be uncomfortable, but usually doesn't cause pain. And I'm mentioning this because there are other conditions of the eye that can occur with autoimmune conditions that can cause the eyes to get red, but they also cause pain. And this should be checked out by an eye doctor. Inflammation of different parts of the eye can result in things called scleritis or uveitis, and this is totally different from dry eye and is treated differently. Which then gets us to the big question, how can I help my dry eye? It may seem like if our dry eye is related to our autoimmune disease, then surely getting our autoimmune disease under control should help, right? Unfortunately, that isn't usually the case. Someone's lupus or RA may be well controlled, but still have issues with their dry eyes. So we need a dedicated plan that is specific to our eye. When treating our dry eye, the goal is to keep the surface of the eyeball as hydrated as possible. That hydration and moisture helps protect the surface of the eye from injury that could lead to infection or vision problems. So we want to prevent all of that. I find it helpful to build a healthy eye toolbox and fill it with tools that will help us keep our eyes hydrated. The first tool is artificial tears. Since we don't have enough of them, we gotta supplement our eyes with artificial tears. Now these artificial tears come with or without preservatives and if you find that you're going to need them long term, which most people with autoimmune conditions will, then you want to use the preservative free version. You also want to make sure that you're using enough of them, which means up to four times a day. Now, I commonly find people don't think their artificial tears are really helping, but it's because they're only using them once a day. Okay, so what's the second tool? Warm compresses. Using a warm compress twice a day is an easy but really effective way at keeping your eyes healthy and hydrated. The heat from the compress opens up the eye's oil glands so that oil can flow out easily. Just like our tears need water, they also need oil, so this really helps tear production. Another tool in the toolbox is omega-3. Omega-3 is a healthy fatty acid that unfortunately many of us aren't getting enough of. It's been well documented that the typical Western diet is too high in the pro-inflammatory omega-6 and too low in the anti-inflammatory omega-3. Although the results are a bit mixed, there is interesting data to show that increasing one's omega-3 intake, whether that's with the addition of fish to your diet or a fish oil supplement, can really help with dry eye symptoms. 
And we can't forget to look around our environment and lifestyle for other changes that can help ease our dry eye symptoms. Evaluate where you spend most of your time whether it's at work or at home, and see if there are air drafts or fans that can be adjusted or if you can add a humidifier. Also, we need to take note of how much screen time we have. Persistent screen time has been shown to worsen dry eye, and so we need to be super mindful of how much consistent screen time we have throughout the day. Now, if your job requires constant screen use, hello, then you got to build in those mini breaks every 30 to 45 minutes. Also see if you can lower your screen. That will decrease the angle that your eyes have to be open in order to see it, which will help with your dry eye symptoms. And of course, the big one is smoking. Now, at this point, don't we all know smoking is bad for our health? But you can add worsening dry eye to the long list of reasons we really shouldn't smoke or quite frankly, be around smoke. If you've tried all these things and your dry eye is still unbearable, then it may be time to look at some prescription medications. There are many prescription options available, some that are focused on lowering inflammation of the eye and some new ones that help build up tears. If you find yourself at that point, then this is usually managed by an ophthalmologist or an eye doctor. Another option your ophthalmologist may talk to you about are called punctal plugs. These are tiny plugs that are placed in the eye's tear ducts. The data is somewhat mixed how beneficial these can be, but if you've tried many other options and are still really struggling with dry eye, then your doctor, your eye doctor, may present them as an option. And finally, there are a few oral medications that may help. These are commonly used in those with autoimmune conditions as they help with tear production, but also with saliva production, which can oftentimes go hand in hand when you have an autoimmune problem. Medications such as pilocarpine and sevimaline are medications that act on certain nerves that increase secretion from both the lacrimal and the salivary glands. Now, the type of nerves these medications target are also involved in sweating. So excessive sweating can sometimes be a problem when taking these medications. Now, I love giving y'all some things to chew on, things to think about and talk with your doctor. It can take a while to get a handle on all the ways your body and life has changed when you have lupus or really any other autoimmune condition. We get focused on pain, energy, and our lab results, and we often forget to bring up or focus on the fact that our eyes are always dry. Or perhaps we just assume that's just the way it's going to be, so why bring it up? I first want to take a moment and have you check in with yourself. Is this something that's affecting you? Do you feel like there's something always in your eye? Do your eyes get red or feel scratchy or gritty, like there's sand in them? Or have they been extra watery? If so, and you've never seen an eye doctor or talked to anyone about it, bring it up at your next visit. Put it on your list so you don't forget. If you have dry eye, ask your doctor if you need to be tested for Sjogren's syndrome. Ask if you have already been tested. And chances are, if you're seeing a rheumatologist, there is a high chance they've already run the Sjogren's test, even if they haven't specifically brought it up. Do you need to see an ophthalmologist? This should be discussed regardless of your Sjogren's test results. Remember, dry eye happens in lots of different autoimmune conditions and a percentage of those with Sjogren's will not have positive test results. Again, if you wanna get more into that, check out the Sjogren's video. Are you already using artificial tears and they aren't helping? How often are you using them and are they preservative free? All right, guys, I hope this helped. Dry eye, like I've been saying, is very common and we often just don't have time to get to it in our visits. So I'm really encouraging you to think about your symptoms, think about what you've been doing and what you can do in your house and bring it up with your doctor. Thanks for watching. I wanna give a big shout out to my friend, Dr. Priya Gupta, who is an ophthalmologist extraordinaire. Look her up if you're in the Vancouver area and we'll see you next time. Thanks.